Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of The Weekly Coder. I'm Chris, and uh, today we are going to complete our Pong game. Um, well, I mean, it's, it's pretty much complete the way it is. But uh, let's, uh, let's add a little more difficulty to the game, because right now um, we've got uh, just the ball kind of going back and forth at different angles, depending on uh, where... It's uh, hit on the paddle, and we've got scores being kept, and we have a win scenario for both the computer and the player, and we have a way to restart the game and all that. So the game is pretty much complete, but it lacks um, like a difficulty advancement. Like you, you know, you you get to the game, but then it should get harder over time. Um, it shouldn't just be the completely the same gameplay uh, time and time again. Otherwise, uh, it gets kind of boring and repetitive, and uh, there's no challenge there. So, um, one way that we can increase the difficulty, and this is probably the only way I'm going to share with you, um, there are some other things that you can probably do, like make the computer player faster over time, or um, introduce obstacles into the game, um, and I don't know if that's how the original Pong goes or not, but what we're going to do is we're going to make it so that over time, the speed at which the ball travels starts to increase, okay? And uh, what I want to say, uh, too, is I'm sorry uh, that this upload uh, came kind of late today. Um, I usually try to do the uploads in the mornings. Um, the other upload that I did on Sunday for the Pac-Man clone, um, that one was extremely late as well. Um, I kind of uh, caught the fl or not the flu, but just a, a cold over the weekend. <clears throat> so I've been kind of indisposed Monday and Tuesday, so I really didn't have time to do the Pac-Man, or the, sorry, the Pong clone. So that's what I'm doing right now is the Pong clone. Um, so, and I'm going to upload this as soon as I'm done making it. So let's go ahead and jump right in. Um, so with your project open, uh, the script that we're going to be working with is the ball script. <clears throat> and uh, now that we've got that open, we're going to need to create two variables. And uh, those two variables are actually going to be um, references so that we can adjust our move speed. So what we're going to do is we're going to create these variables as public variables. And the first one's going to be an integer, and we're going to call this speed increase interval. And we're going to set that to 20. And the other one is going to be a float, also public, and we're going to call this uh, speed increase by. And we're going to set that to 1.0f. Now, the 1.0f is um, the uh, amount of speed that we're going to increase the ball by, depending on what it's going at now, because it starts at 12. And then the 20 is the increase interval, which is going to be at what... Um, at how many seconds do we want to increase the speed? So every 20 seconds, the speed is going to increase by one. So after the first 20 seconds passes, we're going to be at 13 and 14 and 15 and 16 and 17 and so on. So what we're going to do is, let's see here. <clears throat> we're going to create a method. And we're going to call this. Uh, let's call it update speed increase. Oh. All right. And the way that we're going to handle this is we're going to just say if speed increase, and we, we, we need one more variable, sorry. Um, we need a speed increase timer, and we can make that one private. So we'll call this uh, private float speed increase timer. And this is just going to be a timer that keeps track of what our current um, time is since the last time the speed is increased. All right, so if speed increase, let's go back up here to our method, update speed increase. If speed increase timer is greater than or equal to speed increase interval, Okay, so we're checking to see if the speed increase timer is greater than or equal to our speed increase interval, which if you'll remember is 20. Then we reset our speed increase timer to zero to get ready for the next time. All right. And we also check to see if our move speed is greater than zero. 
then our move speed would be plus equals speed increased by. Otherwise, oops. Oh, I'm sorry. Move speed. Otherwise, our move speed will minus equals speed increased by. <clears throat> and that's just because um, our move speed could potentially be a negative number if the ball is traveling in the opposite direction. And um, then here at the end, we're just going to do an else statement. So if our speed increase timer isn't greater than or equal to the speed increase interval, then we're going to increment the speed increase timer by time dot delta time. Okay, so then the only thing that's left is if the game isn't paused, we're going to um, call this update speed increase method. All right, so now um, with that bit of code, we should be able to save and go back into Unity. And um, we're gonna go ahead and press play And nothing is happening. There's no ball being spawned. It's odd. Hmm. Oh, I'm an idiot. <laughs> press space bar to play. We implemented that. All right, so I'm going to press space bar and then I'm going to press pause. All right, because we want to keep track of the ball. So the ball in this case is right here, ball clone, and its current move speed is 12. So we're gonna unpause and we're gonna play and we're gonna check to see if in 20 seconds, oh, damn it, the computer lost. All right, I should, oh, we said, <laughs> we still have our uh, score to win set to two. So let's try that again. We have to actually try to make it so the computer can't lose. All right, so let's, Pause the game for a second and click on our ball. And we're already at 13. Come on, computer. Oh, come on. <laughs> come on, you can get it. Oh, you got it. All right. <clears throat> now I'm going to pause it. Click on the ball. We're at 12 still. And we should be at 13 any second now. All right, we're at 13. Let's see if we can get to 14. Hey, we're at 14. Okay, and if you'll notice, the ball already seems to be moving faster. Yep, we're at 15 now. <clears throat> da, da, da. I'm gonna make it a 16. And one thing that would be cool, we're at 16 by the way for the ball speed, would be to maybe um, add a, um, a UI element to not maybe give the user or the player 
the indication of what the ball speed is, but instead to correlate the level or the speed of the ball with an actual level. So like you start out at level zero, and then the first time the ball speed changes, you change from level zero to level one, and then you can change, you know, the next 20 seconds go by, you're at level two, and the ball is getting pretty darn fast now. We're at 18. And one other thing that you can do is you can store the ball speed in the, uh, in the game class, make that a static public variable. That way um, you can uh, make it so that the, uh, the value of that variable basically stays the same after a, oh, and I lost. Because see, now the ball speed is back to <clears throat> being 12. So we could set it up so that the ball speed um, can stay at the speed that it was at after it gets uh, reset. You're gonna lose, you're gonna lose. Oh. <clears throat> so it's actually kind of sad, right? Because um, this is the end of a tutorial. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, I had a lot of fun making this game. I hope uh, you guys enjoyed it as much as I did. Um, and I hope that you've learned something from it. Um, and, and not just how to, you know, copy code from a tutorial, but also that, you know, you can understand um, why the code was written the way it was and um, how to repurpose, you know, the code for another game and, and kind of to get you thinking along the ways of, you know, how can I make my own kind of game that is maybe similar? Um, you know, a good, a good game to maybe apply this to would be like a brick breaker kind of game, right? Because the only things that would really change here are that um, the paddle would be moving horizontally instead of vertically. And then you'd have all these bricks at the top. And then every time a, the ball collided with one of the bricks, then the brick would disappear. So that would be, uh, that would be pretty simple, right? And then you could just check to see at the angle at which the ball hit the brick to figure out how to ricochet it back, depending on what angle. So you could actually use a lot or almost all of this code to make a brick breaker game, which would be kind of fun. Um, maybe I'll do one. Or maybe not, because I would feel like it would be a lot of repetitive code. But uh, if you guys make one, uh, let me know. I'd like to see, you know, what you've done. Or, you know, and, and that goes for any kind of projects you guys create um, using uh, my tutorials as guides. I'd love to give, like, uh, shout-outs uh, to um, any of my viewers or subscribers um, with, uh, their, uh, with links to their games or whatever that they've made that were inspired by some of the tutorials that I've created, I'd have no problem doing that. That'd be actually a lot of fun. So uh, anyways, uh, enough of me talking and rambling on. Um, this is a super short tutorial, I know. Um, but yeah, it's the last one in the series. And uh, I'm thinking that next week, um, and maybe not next week right away, but maybe the week after, um, I'm gonna start a new tutorial series. And uh, this one's gonna be Space Invaders. So, there's a lot of new fun stuff uh, there that's gonna happen. Um, we're going to do pixel, uh, pixel perfect collision detection using uh, pixels instead of actually using uh, coordinates, right? So, well, it's still kind of using coordinates, but um, we're actually going to be using individual pixels to do collisions with. And then we are going to change alpha values of specific pixels to make it look like parts of buildings have gone missing because of explosions and being hit with stuff. So that's going to be a lot of fun. Replacing uh, this series with uh, Space Invaders would be cool. Um, and then a couple of other projects I may have coming in, um, probably either uh, like a Galaga clone or um, a, a Gradius clone, uh, something along the lines of that. 
I've been playing uh, lots of retro games. Um, oh yeah, that's right. I, I mean, uh, my uh, fiance and I, we have a uh, retro gaming channel. Well, not just retro, but gaming channel in general, uh, where we do uh, all kinds of uh, playthroughs and reviews. We, uh, we just recently got the NES Classic. So we're doing uh, a lot of actual like uh, playthroughs on that. We've played through uh, almost all the games already on the Classic. And that's given me um, a lot of inspiration to do some more uh, tutorials. Um, uh, let's see, one that I was really interested in, uh, uh, definitely like Bubble Bobble. That one would be fun. Uh, maybe doing something similar to like Dr. Mario. Um, Excite Bike, maybe? Um, there wasn't a, a car racing game on there, but. Uh, I, I have been asked to do a car racing tutorial, so I'll probably look into that as well. But uh, anything else that you guys can think of, uh, shoot it my way, and I'll see if it can be done. Well, anything can be done, but I mean, I don't want to throw you guys a hundred uh, tutorial series of how to make a, you know, I don't know, <laughs> a crazy game that takes like, you know, 5,000... 500,000 lines of code and confuse the heck out of everybody. I like to keep these things simple. I'm sorry. I'm like completely congested. I like to keep the tutorial simple so that you can get the basics of coding. And uh, maybe at some point I'll do some, you know, more advanced tutorials. I still also want to get back to doing my uh, C Sharp uh, tutorials and Unity tutorials. Um, so there's a lot of things that I'm actually interested in doing. Um, but... As far as Wednesdays go, we're going to start with Space Invaders and go from there. Sundays, we're still going to finish Pac-Man. Um, we're getting close, I think. Um, we've, we've got still a lot of groundwork to cover, but we're getting pretty close. We've got most of the game flushed out. We're just, you know, kind of um, adding the final touches to it, right? So, anyways, <laughs> if, you, if you guys like the video, give me a thumbs up. Uh, comments down below and uh, don't forget to subscribe press the bell for notifications um, and again I love you guys thank you so much for subscribing uh, I finally hit over 500 subscribers which is a huge milestone for me I want to reach a thousand next and you guys are the ones making that happen so I appreciate it thank you so much and I'll see you next time